The red squirrel is one of Britain's most endearing woodland animals. If, like me, you're lucky enough to have seen reds for yourself, you'll know about their beauty, agility and playfulness. In 1940 I was evacuated and we had a beautiful nature table at one end of our classroom. And at the end of the day, the teacher held up a red squirrel said, boys and girls, this is a red squirrel. And uh, I was just captivated from that moment on. And uh, for me, it was uh, quite extraordinary. And uh, the red squirrel was the most beautiful animal that I'd seen. Without doubt, they're one of our most captivating and charismatic mammals. But they're now facing a tremendous battle for survival. And that's mainly down to the invasive grey squirrel. Reds have been in Britain since the last Ice Age 10,000 years ago, so they're very much a part of our natural ecology. The grey squirrel, by contrast, isn't. It was introduced into the UK from North America. Well, the original interferer with nature, if you like, was uh, Duke of Bedford, who released 10 pairs in his estate of Woburn in 1881 and didn't realise that he was upsetting the balance considerably and those ten pairs just loved the environment and bred like mad and uh, the red squirrel disappeared. So the red squirrel problem is the grey squirrel. By 1940, greys had occupied large areas of southern England, replacing the smaller native red squirrel. When I came to Norfolk in 1979, the red squirrel was disappearing in the face of the advancing grey and I used to go out to wells on the coast where there were still a few red squirrels left and as the grey moved through Holcombe Estate the red disappeared and within weeks in 1979 the red squirrel disappeared. Now just 140,000 reds remain in the UK. Populations remain in Scotland, the north of England and on offshore islands such as Anglesey and the Isle of Wight. Why can't the two animals live side by side? Well, as so often happens, this is a case of an introduced species outcompeting a native one. Greys are twice the size of reds and typically live at much higher population densities. Grey squirrels consume around 10 times more food per hectare than reds, crowding the red squirrels out until only greys are left. They also damage our natural environment stripping trees of bark and preying on eggs and nestlings. Songbirds and woodland birds are a particular target. Unfortunately, grey squirrels also carry the deadly squirrel pox virus, which they pass on to our indigenous reds. Greys are immune to this horrific disease, but to the red squirrel it's deadly. So what can be done? Well, the news isn't all bad. In the past decade, it's been proven that when grey squirrels are removed from an area, reds will return. Take Anglesey, in North Wales. A decade ago, greys had overrun the island. Just 30 hardy reds remained, swamped by around 3,000 greys. But with proper control, and with support from landowners and the local community, Greys have now been virtually eradicated from the island. In 1998 we did have a, a small wild population left in one forest and we removed the greys and within two or three years there were a hundred adults there. It's an island-wide eradication, 720 square kilometres of countryside. We wanted to clear it of grey squirrels and restore red squirrels back to the suite of habitats they used to be found in. Habitat loss has also played its part. Reds are equally at home in broadleaf and coniferous areas, and so the loss and fragmentation of our woodlands further jeopardises their future. There's a very fragmented woodland system here on, on Anglesey, and the challenge was to try and get red squirrels everywhere, and that meant reintroducing them. So we've done several reintroductions, including one here, and today we have around about 300, 350 adults. We've invested quite heavily in high-tech equipment, including a webcam. And it's really interesting because the, that camera allows people, not just on the island, but globally, to see the red squirrels. 
And it's amazing how many emails and letters we get from people on the other side of the world, thrilled to bits that we've removed grey squirrels and red squirrels are back, back where they belong in native uh, woodlands on the island. The challenge now is to take the grey control techniques that have been so successful on Anglesey and apply them on the mainland. This is where the Red Squirrel Survival Trust, or RSST, comes in. With Prince Charles as their patron, the RSST was established as the National Red Squirrel Charity in 2009. They work with volunteers, charities and public bodies, funding work to protect Reds throughout the UK. If you listen to the people that come and see the Red Squirrels here, Hundreds of times I've heard them say, wow, this is an experience I'm never going to forget. And uh, recently there was a poll, wasn't there, of our indigenous mammals and what was the favourite? The red squirrel. We still have a chance to save our reds, but we need to act now. The alternative is that we lose an iconic native species and a much-loved mascot for our country. I'm an ambassador of the RSST because I don't want to be part of a generation that lets that happen. I urge you to do whatever you can to support the Red Squirrel Survival Trust. Together we can save the Red Squirrel.